Hello and welcome to this episode of Focus On with myself, Balisa Mufiking. Now, over the past few days, we were in Namibia, in Vinhook, where the Global African Hydrogen Summit was taking place. We did have a chance to speak to some of the key stakeholders and key industry players about how exactly the African continent aims to become the energy capital for the world. And this is what they had to say. The summit today is really almost a culmination of the dreams we shared with Godfrey three years ago. What we really wanted to do today was bring Africans and the world together to really sort of culminate the discussion of how do we green or how do we clean our industrial ecosystem so that we can start trading in cleaner goods that are more sustainable and competitive around the world. So what the, the summit was really trying to achieve was provide a platform for global dialogue. And just unpack for us, what is Namibia's green hydrogen strategy? Ah, uh, roughly our strategy isn't too different from any other African or any other uh, really developed nation. We have always wanted to industrialize our nation. This is something we captured in Vision 2030, um, uh, so something we articulated all the way back from 2004. What we're just recognizing is that in order to industrialize our nation, essentially to double our GDP output from our secondary sector from 15% currently to more than 40% uh, in the next coming decade. In order to do that, we would need to make goods that are desired by the world. The world has said they want goods with a low carbon footprint. This is roughly our strategy, but it's a strategy we share with South Africa, with Mauritania, with Egypt, with Kenya. It's a strategy we share with China, the US and, and, the, and Europe as well. So it's not too unique, but certainly we recognize that Namibia has some unique endowments to offer. A lot of space, great wind resource, great energy resource, and hopefully a, a nice welcoming population that is keen to have CNBC Africa and investors from around the world. Maybe just for a start, let's talk about some of the key objectives that Hyphen Energy wants to highlight at the summit this year. I think for us, uh, what's key is that this conference is happening for the first time in Africa and I think that's important and really what we want to highlight is the role that Africa can play in helping the world achieve its decarbonization goals because uh, the large industrialization uh, industrialized nations of the north are unable to achieve that on their on their own and Africa has a material role to play and I think it's a once in a generation opportunity for Africa to make use of these of this uh, this new emerging market in order to to drive its economic development in a positive and sustainable way. Yeah. And you know many investor, investors, they speak of opportunities and the vast potential that hydrogen energy um, will bring. But in your view, what are some of the economic prospects that you believe um, Africa will uh, gain should the hydrogen energy plans uh, be successful? So I think if you look at the size of the African continent, it truly is, it truly is enormous. You can fit uh, a large number of the other continents of the world inside Africa. It's that, it's that big. And it, um, it's relatively low population density. And Africa is blessed with a disproportional um, endowment of renewable energy quality. And the fact that it has available space, plus this incredible endowment of natural, of, of a natural resource, it is this once in a generation opportunity to help the world achieve its decarbonisation goals and move towards a sustainable future, and give Africa an economic opportunity to uplift to uh, uplift to people. And I see that Hyphen Energy is quite an active uh, player in a leading Namibia's um, energy revolution. But I just want to know if are you present in other countries and which ones? No, so we we only have this project. It's big enough. Uh, it's big enough and challenging enough just to have the one project. Okay. So we are a consortium of of two shareholders that have come together and have formed a company that's got a 40-year concession from government on government-owned land, following a tender process in order to develop uh, what would be Namibia's largest uh, green hydrogen project. So we are solely focused on delivering this project uh, for Namibia and helping Namibia on its on its way to becoming a, a major player in this sector. And if I could ask, why specifically Namibia? I'm South Africa, so excuse my bias. <laughs> I'm South African too. So really, you need a couple of ingredients in order to manufacture low-cost green hydrogen, because ultimately this is a commodity, and you need to be at the low end of the cost curve. And Namibia has a couple of 
really strategic advantages in its in its favor. First and foremost is it is one of the most stable, well-governed, low-risk geographies on the continent and actually compared to some of its international peers. And that is a key driver of the cost of green hydrogen. Secondly, Namibia is one of the few countries where government is the owner of large tracts of land and that land is largely unoccupied. Namibia has three million people. It's the second least populated uh, country in the world. It's, um, but it's the 35th largest country in the world. So there's massive tracts of available land and you need large amounts of land in order to or availability of land that is unoccupied in order to develop green hydrogen projects. And then last but not least is Namibia has an amazing natural resource. Its solar resource across the whole country is uh, exceptional, but really what makes our project very different to a larger number of the other projects is the wind resource is simply spectacular. So wind is the, super, I call it the superpower of, of Namibia's green hydrogen um, ec economic uh, advantage, and really that's where our project is located. Um, the wind is so so crazy. It's better than wind in the northern uh, in the North Sea. Offshore wind in the North Sea. Our wind onshore in Namibia is, is, has b better production potential, and that makes for low cost green hydrogen. Yeah. And then, lastly, um, I think most importantly, two two additional factors. Uh, it's close to an existing port um, because you need to connect to international markets. Mm -hmm. And then, the most important thing is Namibia, from a policy perspective, has really been at the forefront globally in terms of driving green industrialization uh, policies. Nangula, thank you so much for your time. Now, maybe just for a start, let's talk about some of, um, or rather the message that you want to drive home or highlight at the summit. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. I, I think I cannot capture it better than our vice president said it this morning when she opened ses the session. He said, from the beginning of Namibia, when we started as a country in 1990, when we got our independence from 21 March 20, 1990, what we have always strived to is how do we find a fine line between making sure that we promote economic development for uh, our people while at the same time sustaining econo uh, ecological uh, preservation. And therefore, making sure that ecological preservation and looking after the environment while we promote economic development to support the, uh, uh, the growth of the Namibian economy, to provide jobs for our people, that is what we are looking for. And speaking, on, uh, speaking of partnerships, who are you collaborating with or working with? to reach these goals that you just mentioned now? Of course, collaboration starts here at home. And in Namibia, the collaboration is about bringing the public and the private sector together through with, uh, uh, through, uh, with so, uh, civil society and making sure that youth are part of our, uh, of our community and they are part of the discussion. So we have got a vibrant youth in, uh, youth in energy uh, uh, group in Namibia. They are part of this session. They are having an innovation uh, zone there. And therefore, it is really starting how do we build strong partnership at home to make sure that as Namibian people we bag the vision of government and then of course we go into Africa we are part of the Africa Alliance on green hydrogen and then of course as Namibia we have entered into a memorandum of understanding with the EU we have entered into a memorandum of understanding with Japan we are talking to Korea we are busy finalizing one with the United States and therefore we are building relationships with everybody who is playing a role in this field so that we can see how can we work together because yes this will require much more than one country or one continent for that matter can offer and just looking back on the major climate conference uh, which is cop which is cop um looking back on cop 28 your positioning was on finance technology transfer and capacity building uh, just to name a few how far are you with reaching these goals and do you expect to hold the same stance just going to cop 29 Definitely. Uh, that one will continue to be our stance. And of course, financing especially. Uh, you, you know, like when we're talking about green hydrogen, financing, like it was also discussed earlier today, you've got offtake and then you've got financing. And then it's chicken and egg, which one comes first? And therefore, we need to work with partners. Yes, in one of the relationships that we have with the EU for that matter is looking at the European Investment Bank making available certain funding for projects in Namibia. Uh, when, when we are talking about a relationship with the USA, when you are talking about relationship with Japan, those are some of the potential large of takers. They are looking at also how can they make funding available. Carson, thank you so much for your time. So just for a start, maybe let's just go through some of the Green Growth Summit objectives. Uh, so uh, 
Well, we are here to uh, launch our market entry in Namibia, which is going through a press release and some launch and partnerships about our our green hydrogen project, uh, which we are developing here in Namibia. So basically, that represents an expansion from other activities we have in Africa. We are active in Mauritania, we're active in Morocco. So we're expanding our, let's say, green hydrogen development here in Africa. I yeah. see. And which other regions is Gringo seeing uh, opportunity to develop hydrogen energy plants? Because I see that you are quite active in Mauritania. Yes, Mauritania was uh, our first press release. Also very, very high scale. We think scale is the, I mean, Africa has all the resources in terms of solar and wind. And this is the, there's an unparalleled opportunity to get, get scale in terms of land. We can't get that in Europe where we are from. US, we have projects in, tex, in Texas, US. But Africa, we think is where you can actually reach the scale that brings costs down and makes green fuels cheaper than black fuels in the next decade. That's the mission, basically. And, yeah, and Mauritania has uh, all, all the parameters. Namibia has two, the Namibian desert is, is similar also in, in Morocco. Uh, so that's why we are, we are focusing on these three countries. And let's talk about some of the cost of production as well as the expected timelines, especially in the countries or regions rather that you're investing in. Yes, well, we think, as I said, it's a decade play for us to get, uh, if we have secure uh, projects with scale, we'll start with smaller phases for, with, for, for applications where the market is now, that is aviation fuels, that is methanol for ships and so on, where there is a commercial business case where the customer will pay without subsidies what it needs to make the business case fly. I think... Uh, 30 to 35, there you, you will see the technology development of electrolyzers, solar is continuing, wind is continuing, electrolyzers is just in the cusp of industrialization, but it's the same kind of physics that were behind solar wind. So we'll see a dramatic development in electrolyzers by, by 30 to 35, probably 35, we think we can hit what you know green fuel costs on par with oil and gas. And then I think there's no way back. We will switch automatically to green fuels, right? Yeah. And that's all we have for you for this particular episode. Those are some of the key voices that we had caught up with at this summit this year. But from myself and the team, it's goodbye for now.